so we came into Eretz Yisrael in 1948 as a as a um, as a Medina, and what a lot of us think and feel is that the same way, whatever we had in Chutzlaretz, so we'll continue in Eretz Yisrael. And the only difference is location, right? And therefore, all of the old ways of learning Torah and the old ways of living, there are a whole sect of Am Yisrael which is extremely interested in, ex- in leaving it exactly the way it was. When you look in Chazal, you see that they had a very different approach to the Torah, the change that happens when you come to Eretz Yisrael, and the change not, has a direct connection to the mitzvahs. The mitzvahs are different. What would the change be? Oh, so that's what you have to understand. But first, I want to show you how clear they were about this huge change. And it's something that we say every day in Tzvila, in Kriyashma. I don't necessarily realize what we're saying. So in the second part of Kriyashma, right, there's a whole... There's an entire discussion about what happens when we go into Gullus. Okay? So, if we don't listen to Hashem and we worship Avodazara, right? So, what happened? You don't have Shefa, you don't have Parnasa, okay? And then what happens is you, we lose Eretz Yisrael. Okay, so we know what that feels like. We've been in Gullah for 2,000 years. Totally clear. Okay, if you read the Psukim, this is a connection. This is a response. Now you can kick out of Eretz Yisrael. Now put Devorai now, what, what's the connection with these two things? What, why the fact you left what the Arab Eretz Yisrael should now you put these things on your lave and on your nefesh? You should have done beforehand. The whole parsha of Tefillin is, is set up as a response to Golos. So Chazal says something very fascinating. Rashi brings it. They say like this. Even though you're in Golos, you should have on you, you should put on you the mitzvos. Why? In order that you should recognize the mitzvos when you come back to Eretz Yisrael, you're putting on the mitzvah in Chutzlar to prepare you for the mitzvahs in Eretz Yisrael. In other words, leaving Eretz Yisrael, you already lost a huge part of the mitzvah. And you would think, okay, so if I lost a huge part of the mitzvah, I shouldn't do it anymore. Hashem is telling you, no, 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 don't do that. Leave the mitzvahs in place that you should be used to doing them. So when you do them, in Eretz, when you come back to Eretz Yisrael, you do them for real. It brings the Pasuk in, in Yirmiyo. Hatsivi lochem tziyunim. Right? Put signs on the derech. In other words, a mitzvah is like a sign to go to a certain, certain place. But you're not there yet. Now this is a very radical thing that Chazal are saying. The mitzvahs and chutzars are not, are not the real thing. Right? So to order to understand this, we really have to understand the difference between Eretz Yisrael and Chutzlaretz. And then we have to understand the difference between the mitzvahs that, are, that we did in Chutzlaretz and the mitzvahs we did in Eretz Yisrael. But before we even go into understanding of Eretz Yisrael, really, this is something that is completely obvious as a teacher and as a, and a, and a young person in this door, it's clear, right? Because what is the door's reaction to the mitzvahs that, that the previous door told them about? 19, 20, 21 year olds. What? Depends who, I guess, but a lot like I'm not interested. Not interested. Now, we could look at this and we could say, wow, such a churban, such a terrible thing, how people are going off the derech, and, and it's just, uh, we have all kinds of excuses and reasons why, or we could go a little deeper. 
if we understand that the, the kids of this generation are Mashiach children, and they're looking for something that isn't what the last door had. They're looking for mitzvos that the last door didn't do. The mitzvos that you want to give me, I don't want. Because, like the Pasik says, they're only play mitzvos. They're only mitzvos that are supposed to teach you to be in the right form that when you actually come back to the shul, you will know what to do. But they're different. They're different in their quality. They're different in their, in their etzem. And all of the kids in this generation picked up on that difference and they're saying, I'm not, I'm not willing to do the old thing. So if we wanted to be, before we would like learn the psukim inside, I would like you to come from your own lave and think about and feel what's wrong with the mitzvahs that you were given as taught in, in, in cheder and, in, and from your parents. What's missing and what are you looking for? Well, when I was growing up, like, all of the mitzvahs, it was a, a lot of no questioning, um, so they weren't really reasonable, and, uh, other, and on top of that, like, I just, I don't want to live my life in fear of Hashem, like, I... I personally cannot be scared, scared. Like I don't believe that Hashem is bad, and I was not fine with doing uh, mitzvot and out of fear. Um, like don't keep sh- um, keep Shabbos because uh, if not, God is gonna punish you. Like I'm not doing things because I'm scared of punishment and I cannot do things because I'm scared of punishment. That's how I felt about things and that's why I stopped keeping things and, uh, but, obviously, like, I feel like those things are essential for me to do now. Okay, so let's, let's listen to yourself and you brought up two incredible points. The first thing is, is I couldn't ask any questions. It's unreasonable. And the second thing you said was, is that why am I doing it? What is the push to do it? And you picked up at the push which has been expressed in your parents and in the generation is fear. These two mitos are the principal mitos that change by coming there to Israel. In Chutzlarz, the the relationship that people had from Hashem was an Eved, a worker. When the boss tells the worker what to do, he's not supposed to ask any questions because you have a job, I pay you, I want you to do that job. I'm not interested in you having any ideas. I, I just want it done. And the fact that I pay you is a reason why it gets done. In other words, it wasn't centered around a relationship. The opposite of that we looked at as a marriage, right? Or what should be with children. In a marriage, you have a relationship with this woman, right? You don't want her to do things. If you only got married because you wanted a person to do stuff, then you should hire somebody. You shouldn't get married. You, or you want this person. You want a relationship with this person. I love you. I want you in your mind. Now, within the context of I love you and I want you in your mind, there's all kinds of things which can either enhance the relationship or mess the relationship up, right? So let's say uh, my wife asked me to um, get her something, right? So whether or not I get this thing for her shows my care. It's not about the dress or about the food. When I make a ksuba with her and I say I'm going to supply you with food, it's not the point that I'm going to give her food. The point is that I love you so much that I'm going to make sure that you have food. And she can trust me and she can be like, wow, you, you're a person I can put my hands into and, and feel totally safe. So the, the expressions of the actions are just outer trappings of a mida, which is the main point of our relationship, which is love. That shift happened in Golas and Geula. The relationship that Hashem intended for Kal Yisrael is the one that starts off like in the Mishkan, where there's the Kruvim, the, the Oren is in the middle of everything, and the Kruvim represent the connection. And everything around that is an expression of that relationship. 
When they bring carbonos, it's because really what's going on inside of us is this crew. And therefore, what also happens is, if you have a loving relationship with somebody, obviously everything you do has a reason that has to do with the relationship. If, if, I, my, if I ask my wife to do something and she says, well, why, why do you want that? Right? Obviously, I want her to know why I want it because it'll make it that she'll be able to do it from a place of understanding me and a real connective place as opposed to just getting the, the job done. The more you know the other person's, the other person's Ritsonos, the more you're connected to them. Right. So knowing that they want, what makes them tick, what makes them happy, what makes them sad, itself is connective. So it would never be completely weird for you know, someone to say, like, don't ask any questions. I told you what to do, just do it. Right? That's, just a, a, that's not a relationship. That you only say that to somebody if you don't care about the relationship itself, you care about the thing being done. Okay? So, people's development of their understanding of Torah and mitzvahs changes very much depending on what's going on in their world. Right? The simple way that many people worship Hashem, and I say I worship, it's exactly, that's exactly what it is, is that Messi Lashem talks about this in the beginning of the Sefer, is that when he calls about Zihirus, right? So, the basic. Yira Shemayin, the basic beginning of any relationship is being careful. Careful about what? Careful about the things that you asked me to do. Now, why am I careful? So on a very simplistic level, it's because I'm really thinking about myself. I'm not thinking about the relationship at all. I'm thinking about schar onish, what I'm going to gain, what I'm going to lose. And everything is translated into gain and loss. You can see this like in the Sefer Chavetz Chaim, where he lists excuse me, the amount of Averos, the amount of mitzvahs. If you do this mitzvah, you have 25 lavan, and if you do this mitzvah, you have 25 esim. It's like, it's all numbers games. Like, it's like, how much money are you going to make from this deal? $10,000, $20,000, right? It's about something else. The mitzvah itself is not the value. I want the gain. I want the, 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 the pay dirt. And therefore, what the person is always going on inside of themselves is, what, what am I going to gain? What am I going to lose? And it's what you said. It's a fear-based thing because if you, it's 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 not about the thing itself. It's that I want something external, and I'm scared not to have it, right? So when I do something, it's in order because if I don't, I'm gonna lose this thing that I want to do, and this is the way of getting it, right? So I I I'm driven towards getting these external schar Let me just read the, the opposite side, and I'll explain to you, right? Let's say you, someone was drowning, okay? And you're like, oh, should I go save them or not? Does it ever go through your head, what's, what am I going to get from this? Mm, I don't think so. Well, I've not been in that position, but uh, I tend to like to help people. It's a it's normal because... human reaction because we have a value itself in the action of saving a human being. Right? There are many things you do in your life that you think are important and you believe in them because of the value they create. And you never think about, so what am I going to get from that? Because it, it, that's not the point. The point is the thing itself. Right? Like I'm today creating a, a class about being people having respect and understanding of how incredible the army is. Right? The reason I'm doing that is not because I expect any reward. It's because that's my reward. If people look up to the, the people who, who are running our army and, and what they're doing and, and seeing the Yad Hashem and everything, I, I'm, I'm happy with that. That's my, that's my goal, right? So in any relationship, if, if your wife asks for a dress, right? Or she asks you to give her a massage, right? You're going to think, oh, well, if I give her a massage, then tomorrow she'll give me a massage, right? Or, you know, next time she'll make me, she'll make me good food because I bought her a dress. That's a very, very low version of relationship. Yeah. I actually love you and I want you to feel good. Right? That's the shift in mitzvahs that your generation is looking for. I am not interested in being that this is not valuable on its own. The only reason it's valuable is because someone told me that in school this will cause me pain or cause me pleasure if I do this. But it's actually worthless. 
Like, does, does God really care if you have a black box on your head with two strings in front of it? Let's say you don't have two strings in front of it. You think cut one off. He's like, no. Like, who cares? So how do we motivate ourselves to be so careful about mitzvahs? That the whole Shulchan Aruch is full of pratim and purte, pratim and purte, pratim. So how do, how do you, like, why do, why? Yeah, I guess, like, uh, I, I see it as, like, a lot of added rules are, are, like, that came with the years are in order to keep you in the flow of things and therefore you carry on doing things. So the generation before you, the reason they did things is because this is what you're told. And that's why if you don't have the, the strap, both straps down here, it's like not what you're told, so you're going to get messed over. But they didn't have any real reason why you have to have two straps. If your generations connect the mitzvos, right, it has to be from a place of why is this important to you? I love you, Hashem. I want to connect to you. I want to know you. I want to have a relationship with you. Why are we doing this? This doesn't seem, this seems to be stupid. I don't, you don't care about this. I don't care about this. Why are we doing this? Right? Could you imagine if you had a husband saying to his wife, I want you to, to walk around with a purple hat on your head every single day. And she's like, well, why? Does it help you at all? No, it's completely worthless for me. I just want you to walk around with a purple hat on your head every day. It's like, well, well, is it good for me? No, actually, it doesn't have anything to do with you. Your life's totally fine. But you know what? If you do it, I will make sure that I, every, I, every Moshchadosh, I'll buy you a donut. Think she would do it? Um, most likely not. She'd be like, dude, I don't want a donut. I want you. Okay, donuts I can buy myself. Uh, who, who needs you? I want a relationship with you. Can you tell me why this is important for our relationship? If not, why am I doing it? Right? Yeah. Okay, so that's what the younger generation is now saying to the older generation is, is you guys were very able to motivate yourself through all kinds of fear tactics that you, Hashem was standing there and saying, if you don't do it exactly like I said, I, I, I have my own agenda over here. I want two straps. One here, one here. Why? Don't know. Not much on that. If you don't do it, why else would a person do it? There's nothing else which is meaningful to say, oh, yes, I, I need two straps. Yes, 100%. Um, I yeah, but it's part of a, of a film which, like, I would assume the meaning is, like, to be, to remind you of, uh, of Hashem. Okay, so what you're saying is in order to get the straps understood, you have to way before you start the straps, you start about what, what is the point in general. Yeah. Right? It's like saying, you know, um, a software company is in investing in a certain software and they're spending money investing in a certain part of the app, a certain coding. You know, when you, you push this button, what happens? And a guy says, why are you spending so much money on this stupid button? It doesn't have any meaning. It's like, well, you didn't see the entire app. If you see the whole app, you understand where everything fits in. You'll understand this button is an integral part of the app work functioning in general. Right. Right. So it would be silly for us to look at straps of fill and say, why are we doing that? Well, okay, I have a better question. Why are we doing mitzvahs in general? What's the point of mitzvahs? Then, okay, the point of mitzvahs, then I understand what's the point of mitzvah this. Without the, the main idea, you're lost. Right? Why everything? The main thing that this generation knows, that the other generations did not know, Hashem loves me. They come from a place of, wait, why am I here, Bukhla? I don't have to be here. He didn't have to create me. Right? He didn't create me for him. He doesn't need me. He doesn't have an agenda for me that has nothing to have to do with him. He doesn't care. So I feel right now, I breathe in the morning, I say, oh, Hashem loves me. Hashem loves me. This is the Chiddush that over the last 20, 30 years, people have been coming into, and you can even see in the secular world, much more, you know, God loves you, God loves you. That's something that every kid is looking for and always talking about. Okay, that's a huge shift that came into the world because Am Yisrael is an Eretz Yisrael. And we'll understand that soon. After that shift happens, then there's another shift. The same way you fall in love with a woman, Okay. And like, wow, I love you. I just want to spend the rest of my life with you. And you're all in this la la la, and that's great. And then you move into the same house, and then each one starts saying, well, you know, I need you to, I need you to clean the toilet. I mean, you know, I need you to wash the floor. I need you to, to fix the leak. You know, right? And both are saying to each other. It's not one is saying to more than the other, right? 
suddenly there are all kinds of details in the relationship that make a huge difference in the relationship. Not because everyone cares about the floors inherently in the relationship. It's because what it means to the other person or to the relationship, whether or not you do these things. So first, the first thing that we, this generation is doing a good job in is replacing the fear and putting in love. Yeah. Now we need to understand how to make the relationship completely intimate. In other words, you're going to have two people love each other, but how they have an intimate relationship takes a lot of tweaking. That's why when you have a marriage, you can work on the marriage for 50 years and consistently build the intimacy between the two of them. So that's what the point of mitzvahs are. And I'm just saying it in, in a broad sense. I'm going to go into more details. When we start with the assumption of having love, then we understand how the mitzvah enhances that love. Then we can understand how each mitzvah is relevant and important. Then your generation will be very interested and in love with mitzvahs because they know what it does for the relationship. That's what Chazal means, that mitzvahs and chutzlarets are just an action. That it's a good thing we still know what tefillin are, because otherwise now where tefillin can actually make a real full, full-fledged intimate relationship, now we know how they look. If he would have dropped it, because what the point of tefillin is really is to make an intimate relationship, and that's not what people were experiencing in chutzlarets, right? We would have dropped it and said, okay, it's not relevant anymore, right? It's sort of like um, you, a, a man and a woman get separated, okay? And not, they don't see each other and you know, there's anger and he tells her, you know what? I still want you to dress up, look nice. She's like, for who? Right? I mean, what's the difference? No, you're not, you're not gonna look at me anyway. And he's like, no, I want you to stay in, in the mode of looking beautiful. So when, right, when, we, when we get back together, right? You'll be beautiful still. I don't want you to forget how beautiful you are and how beautiful you can make yourself because that'll be a huge loss in your life. That's a mitzvah on chutzlarts. It's a way of being that lacked the point of the way of being. So, we have to understand two things. What is Eretz Yisrael? And then, what happens in Eretz Yisrael that shifts the mitzvah to be something totally different? And inherent in that question is, what are mitzvahs? I mean, obviously, I understand what, what the essence of a mitzvah is. Right. <clears throat> Clear so far? Yeah. Okay, great. So, if you notice, Avraham Avinu is the beginning of a Jew, right? Right. There was no such thing as a Jew until then. There was a world, Adam Rishon, he did his thing, people messed up, and Hashem was like, okay. And as the way the, the Chazal described it in the Medrash, each generation, the Hashem was in the world, his Shechina was Shorah, Adam Rishon had a conversation with Hashem, and every generation pushed Hashem out of the world. The Shechina was one, one up Madrega, one Madrega, two Madregas, until it got to the, the, the top of Sever Rakim. And after that, Avram, Yitzchak, Yaakov, and each generation, Levi, Kahas, Moshe, brought the Shekhinah down one more step. So what, what you're visualizing is the difference between what happened between Avram Avinu was there, the consciousness, God consciousness of being involved in our life disappeared. Right? That's what it says in the Pasuk that we, um, when he said to Eliezer, right? He says to me, I'm in Mashbi and you and and then he says, Hashem, who took me out of, out of where I was, and it was a, a, a Elohei Hashemayim. So he describes in five sukkim difference Elohei Hashemayim, and one time he calls him Elohei Aretz also. So Chazal say, before I came into the world, he was just Elohei Hashemayim, because no one knew him. Right. I brought him to me to Elohei Aretz, which means the consciousness of God involving in Aretz things that people didn't have. They understood Hashemayim, Hashemayim, Hashem. Right, we have incredible power over here, and he's not involved. Why would Hashem create the world like that? Great question. So, in order to understand everything, 
Rashi about mitzvahs, and understand why would Hashem create the world? <laughs> and that question you can't answer anything. Well, why created the world that at the moment is like I, I don't really care. I don't really care. Like, <laughs> um, but like, why would he create a world and not be here with us? Like, right. uh, okay. It goes together the same question because if you don't understand the the main point, then you can't understand the pratim. I guess. Right. Okay, so to understand all of that, why did Hashem create the world? And why did he make it in a way that he could be kicked out of his own world? Right? Why did he create human minds to be able to do something like that? Like, you know, you want to you wanna create a world, do it that people should know you're here, you exist, like, what's, okay. what's the point of this whole searching game? Right. So, you have to first identify, when you ask your question, you have to identify whose responsibility was it that it became a searching game? When did that happen? happened like after after creation I guess in this in, in, in creation when Hashem put Adam and, Ga- and Gan Eden did he have any did he have to search Hashem out no totally clear I have a conversation with him right so it means Hashem created Adam to be in a space where he could have a completely cognizant intimate relationship with him like he like he wanted and in that relationship there isn't any knowledge of bad because if the world is Hashem and people are in connection with Hashem where's their bad Adam decided no, I want I want to have the ability to have bad in the world so what he was basically doing was he wants spaces in the world where you can't experience Hashem. Because if you, if you experience Hashem, there's no such thing as having bad in the world. Bad always comes for where there's something blocking the expression of Hashem. That allows for bad to come in. You can't, if, if, if all you see is love and godliness all the time, right? That's your reality. There's no way to even think about killing somebody. Wouldn't that be a better reality? Right, so that's reality. I agree with you. He gave that reality to us, called Gan Eden. He also agrees with you. But there's one precept that you're, you have to realize, which is part of the gift, which is any relationship, if it's going to be oneness, has to come from within that person. So when you marry a woman, right, you just don't go over to her club around the head and say, I'm taking you home. Right? You say, do you want to marry me? Right? Yeah. And she chooses. She can say, no, I think you're not such a good guy and I don't want to marry you. I say, I love you and I want to marry you, right? That choice doesn't ever change. A marriage is based on choice. The two people have to want to be together for that marriage to be functional. The second the marriage is one doesn't want, there's actually no intimacy there. And la halacha, it's also to, be, to sleep together because that's not marriage. Right. Right? And that's why Hashem put into the recipe something which is not a godly trait, which is called divorce. Because if you want to give people the ability to choose, they can't have choice if they're stuck in it forever. So we have a relationship with Hashem. He's like, I love you and I want you in your mind. Okay, and I'm going to give you everything. All cold to a cell and there's no problems in the world. Now, I'm going to tell you, do you want this or not? Adam's like, mm, no, I don't want it. He wants separate. He wants the ability to have an experience with bad, which means you don't want to be with Hashem at that moment. You want to be 
your brains, your consciousness is looking at something which is a block of Hashem existence in a positive way. I actually want you, if you want to put it very, very gas, it's like a man and a woman who are married, it's like, do you want to have a full intimate relationship where we're totally in, in, entwined in each other and totally just focused on each other? She's like, no. I'm happy to be with you for three times a week, but two times a week I want to go dance in the pubs with all the rest of the guys. Right? When she's doing that, she's not in the consciousness of her husband, for sure not, right? She's doing something else. The fact she's having a conversation with the guy is like, okay, he doesn't exist, he's not in my life, because that's a steer. So if we can consciously decide, you know, I want, Cain wants to kill Hevel. Right? Yeah, Bali, and he does it, right? God doesn't kill, ever. So if you want to be in God's world, there's such a thing as killing. You have to pull yourself. Man, that's not the reality. The truth is that there's a good thing. It's good to end someone's life. There's that. That's like, yeah, I want to live like that. He chose that. If he didn't have the ability to choose between these two realities, then when he actually is with Hashem, it's also not a choice. It's not real. Hashem wants us to have a real relationship with him. It's coming from within us. Real intimate. So he gave us totally free reign. And the free reign we have is to pull out of the relationship. Which means, practically speaking, to make him, to not us not conscious of him. Now what happens when you choose one time, two times, three times, right? So the husband, a normal husband, is like, take sayonara, I'm not, I'm not, you know, you, I'm, I gave you a chance, I want you, you don't want me, uh, call two. Hashem doesn't do that. He sets up a system like a good father does. A husband is not invested to keep pulling her in. Because if you want me, you want me, you don't want me, you want me. He's also a father. Which means a father is investing, is growing his son because he that's his job. He loves his son. He wants his son to grow up. And the son makes a hundred million mistakes. He's like, I'm still invested. So Hashem set up the world as a system that when you make decisions to go far, that will teach you and ultimately pull you back to coming close again. So now how does that answer your question? You ask, why is it a game where he, why would you make a world where he can disappear? Well, I'll tell you. Because he wants an intimate relationship. Okay, now he made a world disappear. So now that's it. We chose where he's disappeared. No, we actually didn't do that. He made a world which causes us to search. To be hungry. Like, where is he? Looking at how uh, most human nature is, um, okay, maybe it's like a very negative perspective, um, but a lot of people really don't want to do good. Wouldn't it be better to at least have like a 50-50 balance? So, not only do I think it's not 50-50, I think it's completely stacked the other way. In other words, I never met a human being who didn't want to do good. I never met one. I'm sure there are, but they have to 